Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to tell you all the things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. Let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. I have a lot of show to get through, so let's kick it off. 21 degrees outside. It's a little foggy outside. It started to clear up as soon as I got to work this morning around 8.30, um, no, 7.00. Nah, 8 o'clock, whatever. Uh, but the high is going to be 41, your low is going to be 27. You can expect the weekend to have a uh, rain and snow mixtures with the uh, 40 degree temperatures. It's not quite cold enough for snow, but it is uh, enough precipitation for a little bit of that moisture happening this weekend as well. Uh, Sunday, you're going to have 80 to 40 percent chance of rain, uh, snow mixtures, and all that stuff. Monday, the temperature is going to start going a little bit lower, so we're going to have some more of that fluffy snow uh, be coming down after the weekend, starting in your school week next week. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the things that are happening in the news. So uh, one of the things that are happening is that the city of Missoula is uh, going to be building a new 48-unit uh, condo uh, apartment. Uh, they're going to be right next to uh, Bridge Pizza, just off of the uh, the trail near Higgins near Higgins Bridge on the uh, south side. Um, they, what they wanted, uh, the, they're going to be demolishing a couple of the old brick houses there. Um, the county's joint city county meeting met uh, on Tuesday. Uh, during the planning board and voted in favor to rezone uh, four to two. The board serves as an advisory capacity of the Missoula City Council and the council's land use and planning committee will discuss this proposal on December 11th, which will be next Wednesday. And they usually do it sometime around, uh, well, you can always check the meetings uh, online as well, but they usually have it around uh, 10, 11 a.m., Sometimes it's after uh, noon, depending upon how long they schedule this meeting to be. Um, in other local news, Missoula has jumped on a lawsuit against e-scooters in national parks. So one of the biggest things that has been happening is that e-scooters have become very popular within urban areas. And now a lot of uh, places such as Missoula is considering doing some e-bikes e and uh, ride sharing kind of deals. But one of the things is that uh, people have been using electronic scooters and bikes on national trails and have become become uh, an issue with overcrowding. So um, I like to think of this as a beta phase for a lot of these bikes. And a lot of the, uh, without um, getting into too much detail, uh, the lawsuit claims that the National Park let electronic bikes and national trails without environmental impact studies or much notice. Uh, the plaintiffs claim that the Park Service uh, officials violated the Federal Advisory Committee Act by uh, deliberating for months with an advisory committee that involved multiple private industries uh, representing the, those who prompted the use of e-bikes in parks. Um, of course, imagine if you would. You were uh, riding off the trail and a slightly bulkier bike came zooming past you. And one of the things uh, about this is that uh, bikes in general can be uh, kind of cumbersome on some of the trails in national parks since a lot of the trails that are not like the wider trails or uh, done like some of the side trails that they have in a lot of national parks are mostly for foot so a lot of times it's really hard for bikes to even get through there um, of course technically uh, they are figuring out what to do with the e-bikes since they're a relatively new technology that are being commercially used um, there is no rule against personally owned e-bikes but they are working on s certain rideshare things that they're going to be moving forward on this so but of course so far e-bikes are allowed in glacier yellowstone Grand Ten National Parks, anywhere traditional bikes are allowed. E-bikes are also allowed in the pathways of a national elk refuge that connects the Grand T Trenton National Park. Um, and more, and more state news, uh, the state of Montana, uh, one of the things that uh, the state of Montana uh, was... Um, was um, basically uh, called out on was disciplinary uh, actions towards Native American students. In Montana schools, black, Hispanic, and American Indian students are more likely than white students to be suspended, arrested, or expelled from the schools. Uh, the Montana A ACLU reports call for several reforms, including some that states have taken on, banning zero-tolerance policies in schools, banning exclusionary di discipline for students in sixth grade and under, and focusing on behavior modification instead of punishments. Out-of-school suspension has fallen out of favor for a lot of s larger cities and urban areas. Part of schools uh, is part of school is to get kids to go to school, and uh, out-of-school suspension kind of takes away that. Uh, movement as well. Okay, um, in national news, uh, w one of the big things that are happening, I'm sure you heard, is that Democratic House Majority Leader Nancy Pelosi official uh, 
uh, heard what needed to be said to move forward with drafting articles of, of impeachment against President Donald Trump. She said Trump has engaged in abuse of power, undermining our national security and jeopardizing the integrity of our elections. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, Republican from California, uh, California said that Pelosi weakened this nation with her impeachment announcement. Trump tweeted challenging the House to go forward, hoping GOP Majority Senate will dismiss the articles of impeachment as soon as they are presented. The next step for uh, Dems is to decide to, uh, whether or not they're going to use uh, specifically Robert Mueller's report, they're going to use the Ukrainian hearings, or they're going to use all of the above uh, while they're uh, furthering this uh, articles of impeachment. So that's the next step, what's going on. All right. So those are some of your news items that are uh, happening in and around the world today. Here's a couple of new programs going to be airing on MCAT this weekend. We got a, a lot of great stuff. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about some movies that are coming out this weekend. It is First Friday, and I have uh, some more stuff talking about your First Friday art guide in the downtown Missoula area coming up. He has a look about him of, you know, you want, you want a piece of me? <laughs> we, or or we, can just, we can just play cards and be friends. Uh, you decide. Uh, a man of total confidence and uh, com comfort in his own skin. I, but I, I, I really do want to stress what an extraordinary development this had, this just in three years had occurred. In, uh, you know, it, imagine accomplishing so much, learning so much in this brief period of three years. He had grown as a commander and as a leader. He found his stride as a figure who could genuinely inspire loyalty and affection from other powerful generals and political figures. He had the right blend of courage and dignity and humor and self-effacing authenticity, matched with superior skill at organizing large-scale, high-stakes, victorious military campaigns. And crucially, Eisenhower had an air of luck and good fortune about him that was valuable not just in the, as a leader uh, in the army, but of course, for, as a, for a politician, that was pure magic. So again, it's one thing to talk about harnessing your recreational economy. It's another thing to build it step by step and make it happen and connect it to your parks. So that Ainsworth Field came in. They worked with our uh, community facilities program for uh, getting a grant. And they've been working very hard on this project through the, um, the dizzying highs and the terrifying lows of a project like this. And their tenacity is getting to the point where they're, they're going to make this happen. They're working very hard on this. And this is something where, you know, they could have fundraised $100,000 for phase one, and then they could have fundraised again the next year for phase two, phase three, phase four. But we don't have that kind of time. Um, I was in Helena. Um, actually, we just went through a, a, an award cycle of these low-income housing tax credits that I'm going to talk about, and I was there on Monday, and um, Bozeman came up and they did a, uh, th or they mentioned one of the studies they have, they need to have 5,800 affordable homes built in the next five years to keep up with the current demand. I mean, that, that is staggering. It's, it's unbelievable. I don't know exactly what it is for Missoula, I and mean, we, we probably have those statistics, um, uh, it, it, it's just unbelievable. So it's really hard to keep up with that demand if you don't have a lot of smart people working really hard and a lot of uh, community-oriented people putting their heads together and trying to come up with creative ways. So.
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some new movies that are coming out this weekend. It's time for Pre-Critic. And kicking things off, this movie's already out, but I haven't really talked about it, but it deserves to be talked about, is a, a Clue kind of reboot. Knives Out from the last week's premiere of Clue rebooted movie about people and things happening in a mysterious sense where what you think happens doesn't happen, but what you know happens, it doesn't happen quite the way you thought it happens because, hey, movie just throws in plot points to be like, you know, this one scene? Well, if we look at it from this other angle, this other person's creeping around the corner and doing their own thing. And this person's guilty just for doing that. But he's not really. And that's basically the movie. All right, moving on to the next movie. Uh... Hey, this is, uh, hey, you like the Lego movie? Well, here's another kind of thing. So, uh, you know, there's Playmobil, which is kind of like a Lego ripoff, uh, you know, claw hands and characters, but this time in the sense of a movie. Uh, Harry Potter, or his voice, uh, joins the all-star cast. Yeah, there's quite a bit of people, actually, in this movie, of characters living in a world where things can uh, sell to your two-year-old and up child. Uh, it's basically suggesting, and you should probably skip this movie if you want to, because otherwise, if you take your kids to this movie, they're probably wanting these toys. Um, otherwise, um, you know, this is a movie that you can take your kids while you go see um, these other great movies that are coming out this weekend. <laughs> Speaking of another great movie, we have Aeronauts. Ooh, it's not quite like Astronauts, but it's close. You get a bunch of uh, hot air blown into this movie, or should I say uh, into their balloon, as they go as high as they possibly can in the 1800s, 1900 times. You know, it's like, uh, it's like around the world in 80 days kind of genre, Victorian era. That's good. That's a good thing. Rogers and Hammerstein, that kind of stuff. So... Basically, this is a whole uh, movie about the uh, incarnation of basically finding a, a balloon and going to the stratosphere and other spheres just to kind of see exactly how weather works and weather patterns and stuff like that. But it's not it's going to kind of ignore all the science and go right into the uh, the tale of survival of these two folks um, who are just kind of there who are just like, oh, no, we're, it's it's cold up here. We didn't know that. It's the low pressure. It's like, oh, low pressure is like science and other things. And uh, so basically this movie is going to be there tale of survival as they get to the tippy top of as far as they can possibly go as any human has gone before uh, at that particular time um, and then they try to survive and they come down and they'd be like I learned a lot uh, don't go up there without proper uh, equipment all right so those are some of the movies that are coming out this weekend I have a movie that I want to show you guys and then after this I'm going to show you guys a talk and show show and tell some city council stuff right after uh, dubbing stuff from a Sherlock Holmes movie, uh, Basil Ratsbottom, uh, but you don't see Basil. Uh, you'll see the people in the movie called Dressed to Kill. <laughs> Gonna be sneaky. La da da. Ba ba ba. <laughs> oh, oh my dear, how are you? <laughs> Quite fine, thank you very much. Uh, you look like $2.5 million. <clears throat> Let me take your coat. <laughs> you know, I try to look my best. Perhaps a change in venue would be in order? Not much for monster trucks. Oh, come on. They're bringing out Truckosaurus. It's going to be awesome. It's impossible to argue with you. Sometimes a surprise is the best way to get a girl to come out with you. Oh, well, if I'm going to go out with you, I'm going to need a drink. Perhaps after a couple Irish trash cans, I'd be more in the mood. <laughs> You're incorrigible. <laughs> well, a good buzz is so hard to find these days. Perhaps maybe this thing could... Oh, my dear. You need to get your eyes checked. That's just an ornamental box. You put cigars, jewelry, and other stuff in there. You... Oh, wow, really? Oh, sorry. I'm not much for small talk since I got hit in the head. Well, no one's perfect, my dear. <laughs> You should like that box, don't you? Oh, yeah. Well, my mama gave me that box, and when she gave it to me, she said, I got this at the flea market, and I don't have any room in my house, so here you go. That's relatable. You have no idea. It's very lovely. <laughs> so are you, my dear. You look pretty? Gorgeous. I like to think of myself as gorgeous. <laughs> well, my dear, you definitely got those in spades. I like hearts. The suit of spades is just ignorant. So in a game of cards, if you had any spades, you just Ew. send it back to the pile. Send it back. I don't think I should be eavesdropping. Huh. Did, did you hear something? Nah. It was just your imagination. <laughs> well, when you get older, my dear. <laughs> you said older. <laughs> oh, man, I'm out of breath. 
Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Well, I am. Well, being out of breath is, you know, interesting. The older you get, after all. Well, maybe you shouldn't be smoking all the cigars. Well, I can't help it. Uh, my daddy's smoking cigars, so I guess I inherited smoking cigars, so... Oh, I just can't get into it with you right now. Yeah, we probably should get going. You will be breathing in all that diesel, after all. So I guess that's as good as, like, smoking cigars and whatever. Huh. <laughs> but you know what's worse than smoking cigars? A knife in the back. <laughs> I don't get it. Oh! oh, I get it now. Oh, my fur. You fool. You were supposed to wait for the magic word. Chicky, chicky coconuts. But no, you almost could have hit me. Well, maybe next time you can learn to take directions. What do you say? I'm sorry, ma'am. Well, guess it can't be helped. You do know you got blood on my fur coat. And guess who's going to have to pay for it? That's right, you. Mm. Uh, maybe I'll just say PETA threw blood at me. So the city council meeting was fairly short the other day. Uh, so this is from um, city council and community meetings that happened on uh, December 2nd and December 4th. We're kicking things off with Mike Sweet, who talks about MCPS's uh, building that has uh, gone up for um, um, lease right now. I, you saw that the uh, uh, school administration building was up for a lease now for sale. Um, at a previous hearing talking about affordable housing, somebody mentioned, well, the other wards have to step up to the plate because all the work's being done in the, in the outer wards. So this is a time for both City Council and Ward 3 to step up and see if there is an opportunity for that building that fits in with the master plan that was just passed for the downtown. It's only a block off the master plan boundary. Could be a really nice mixed use. I would talk to Montgomery's and see if you could do a joint kind of uh, investment plan there or something like that. But I, given this is a public facility now, and I think there's a real opportunity to make it a public good. So I would like to, uh, you got four months, I'd like to see the city step up and start a conversation to see if that uh, can happen. All right, so this is something that the city and the uh, MCPS will have to work on to figure out exactly what they want to do with this building. Or it could be just leased to another kind of like a school or another meeting place because a lot of uh, the school has rented to the Missoula International School before. They've kind of traded with a, a land swap with uh, some of the uh, University of Montana with some of their buildings as well. And it's just something that can be considered as well since uh, the school has updated a lot of their buildings and have kind of moved around with uh, this new that bond that passed a couple years back. All right, let's talk another uh, another person. Of course, so far, I know this uh, um, uh, Brent Miller uh, with uh, the group of folks who have been coming down to the city uh, council meeting every single week to talk against TIFFs. Uh, talks a little bit more about TIFFs. Having read Nicholas Griefer's elected official's guide to tax increment financing, has anyone else read this document? Um, after reading that document, which is sort of a how-to for how to do this, I've concluded for myself that it's being misused in a number of ways. And I think the number one issue is that they're only for the elimination of blight. That doesn't include buildings and affordable housing and all these other things that we're doing. It's a complete perversion of language also to refer to some of these areas as blight because under the current requirements, we could designate the University of Montana blighted. So I think it's not terribly fringe to say that the standards are too lenient to, we could describe every square inch of Missoula as blight under the current regulations. If you only have to meet four of the 15 standards, my house is blighted. You could knock it down easily and say, yeah, it's blighted. So uh, those are my problems in this is we're redefining blight and we're misusing TIFFs to do things other than the elimination of blight. Uh, so in the pursuit of eliminating blight um, and by redefining it and by 
saying that so much of the city is potentially blighted, we really need to hold ourselves up to a higher standard. All right. So that was Brant Miller talking about that. Uh, of course, uh, TIFFs have been used in Missoula as a tool for solving some of the um, blighted issues, yes, and some of the sidewalks as well. Um, they encourage uh, developers to use some of their resources while developing the buildings to also develop the street and infrastructure within the area to help improve the area as a whole. Um, and the city kind of takes advantage of the developers while it happens. It's it's more of like a synergy kind of deal of the city has been using TIFFs for, and there's a lot of uh, TIFFs being used which has ro uh, risen a lot of uh, red flags for a lot of community members within the city of Missoula. Of course, since there were not too many uh, committee meetings on Wednesday before Thanksgiving, uh, the city had two items on the consent agenda, so they had a very short city council meeting. But I have committee meetings I'm going to be talking about. And kicking things off with your uh, uh, meetings is the... Um, is the indoor water parks, uh, the aquatic centers, and the, all the activities that happen. Um, this is the, about the time when they're going to start talking about their 2019 summary of of all the parks, uh, for the parks, and uh, this is Parks and Conservation Committee meeting, and Eric Seagrave talking about Splash Montana and various parks with water outdoor play, and this is what he had to say. You can see that in fiscal 19, we've increased our um, attendance through programs, um, programs meaning swim lessons and uh, things such as the dive-in movie, inner tube water polo. Daily admissions were down a little bit for fiscal year 19. Those are uh, visits that um, we just register at the gate coming into recreation swim, but um, we're within range of the five-year average. Our membership was also down a tiny bit, but then we've also increased our parties and rental revenue. All right, so uh, if you can if you can actually read this around this area, the average says one hundred and seventy three thousand eight hundred and sixty seven dollars is the five year average uh, from the aquatics programs. This year they did one hundred and seventy thousand three hundred eighty five, and then last year was one hundred and sixty eight thousand one hundred and ninety. Um, one of the things that uh, they also talked about is uh, the need for uh, more um, lifeguards and just the need for uh, m more employment. And a lot of times it's, a, it's, it's a very interesting. Of course, you know, doing summer of 2019 um, was also very mild compared to the last couple summers. Um, and according to Eric C. Grave, only about 22 days of 90 degree temperatures. I don't even think it reached 100 degrees this last summer. But, you know, you can always... Uh, look it up and see. Um, the uh, acoustics program includes um, swim lessons, lifeguard lessons, and just from the top of my head, I remember them doing a kayak lessons during the winter time inside the Kearns Aquatic Center. Uh, Splash has provided uh, concessions through the last couple of years and have increased by over 60 percent, uh, 26,000 net gain of concessions just this just this year uh, at these water parks, you know, like they just have food trucks and stuff like that. But it's quite a lot of money that they brought in revenue wise. But of course, overall, Aquatic saw a net game of $54,000. Expenses are down from past years as well. Some of the issues uh, had to do with employment. And so Eric C. Gray reflects back of um, the lack of interests of lifeguards. Um, with the economy doing better, uh, kids are able to have their phones and their parents are able to afford the. Um, the minutes. Um, kids are able to get cars pretty cheap and there is not necessarily that big drive to have a job. Then there's also um, other uh, facilities that hire the same hiring pool. Um, so we're going after uh, 15 to um, 18 year old. Those are our primary age grouping for our, our lifeguards. And um, at the same time, they're drawn away, like my daughter, she would rather work at um, scooping ice cream than working as a lifeguard because there's no stress with that. You know, you don't have, you're not going to have a kid die <laughs> or have that situation happen if you days off, you're going to melt some ice cream. So um, I think the seriousness of it um, is scaring some kids away. This All right, so that was uh, Eric Seagrave explaining just how hard it is to find a good lifeguard these days. Um, 
of course, you know, that's just one of the things that they were talking about according to the Aquatic Center. Uh, there's, there's a lot more to that meeting as well, and you guys can check that out at the uh, Parks and Conservation. But so far, this was a fiscal uh, kind of um, overview. So if you're interested in about the monies that went into the Aquatic Center this year as well. All right, moving on, we're talking about admin and finance, the fight in finance. Uh, the City of Missoula Ethics Advisory Committee has been over the last year to discuss options for a city code of ethics policy for elected officials and members of boards and commissions. Heather Harp reflects on um, just a basic code of ethics. Why do we feel like there's a lot of pushback from our community these days? 20 years ago, members of this city council must have faced a similar desire to improve themselves. They approved a code of ethics that upped the bar of transparency. It essentially put the public and our electeds on notice. But 20 years go by, and frankly, with natural turnover in our role, memories fade. And when things are going well, we tend to think, take things for granted. But we face mounting fears that are caused by inequalities that we see in this community, a wage gap, a wealth gap, that ultimately culminates in a distrust of local government. We are at a place in time that people of all sorts want to be reassured that their voices are being heard and that progress for the people is progressing, not for just some people, but for all of us. All right, so that was Heather Harp uh, talking the introduction of this as well. Of course, you know, a new era of social media and connectivity of information and misinformation as well is, has become a very popular thing as well. Um, they want to be make sure that the city of Missoula is open and clear to the public. Of course, I've been watching these meetings so much and I've been very clear about, you know, like the public's um, views within the government and how they feel about TIFs and all that stuff. And that's one of the reasons why the city wants to figure out a way to be more transparent and also uh, update kind of like a code of ethics about this as well. So Steve Johnson, he is the Central Service Director, talked about these kinds of code of ethics are important. At the point where you have to hold people accountable for transgressions, um, it, it you, you need some basis on which to do that. And I think trying to describe the, the behaviors that you expect of each other, expect of yourselves, et cetera, will help in terms of trying to deal with any problems that may arise. That's one of the things that, that is difficult about human resources policies in particular, is that we can't really expect our employees to uh, behave in a certain way if we haven't described what that way is that we expect them to behave. And so I think we have an obligation at some point, and whether you do it in a policy or, a, or some other kind of document or something, there, there's certainly lots of, lots of different avenues you can, you can pursue in terms of trying to, trying to do it. But I do think it's important to, tr to try to describe in as behaviorally anchored terms as you can the behavior you expect. All right, so that uh, was one of the uh, um, uh, people presenting on this as well. Gwen Jones was concerned that this should be something that is more of a mission statement and not deter people from joining public office. Uh, they want to be able to be transparent, be able to work with people and have people uh, represent the uh, wards within the city of Missoula. Jassy Ramos reflects on... Uh, the next uh, Council of Ethics. So the whole idea is that he's a, uh, he's kind of worried about this particular one, how it will affect the future uh, city councils move, uh, and like Gwen Jones was future involvement with the city council. Else on this council, this really leaves a lot of stuff open to, I think, scrutiny that may or may not restrict our freedom in some aspects if we're concerned about these being enforced. So I know with Congress right now, everybody in Congress they have immunity from lawsuit um, when. And for anything that's said on the House floor. And there's a really good reason for that. It's, it's, I mean, let's just look at one example where civility, respect, and decorum. I mean, some of that stuff can be subjective to whoever is trying to enforce this. What if somebody's just passionately arguing, like I know many of us have, in the minority opinion on stuff? Um, each year, I, th I think I've seen almost every council member argue passionately about something, and who's to decide whether or not that is um, respectful or that's ad adequate decorum? And then when you come to um, 
I guess honesty, integrity, and trustworthiness, a lot of us have different truths um, that we hold dear based on our values. I mean, just look at the example of economics. You look at the Keynesian School of Economic Thought where Keynes believed fully, and it was his truth that, that government intervention was better. And then you look at the Frederick Hayek, the Austrian School of Economic Thought. Their school of economic thought states that their truth, and they believe fully that, that the market functions better without. And those are different theories that we discuss um, very often in, in council and, and in government bodies. And I think that... All right. So that was kind of... Uh, Jesse Ramos talked a little bit more about ethics. I mean, that's just kind of like one of those things that you really have to really look in deep and dive into because ethics are a code of of a person, of yourself, while, you know, laws in place are a group of people coming together and figuring out a system that works pretty much for everybody, which is constantly argued, constantly changed, constantly updated. So a code of ethics can kind of be kind of difficult to kind of sway because uh, the trend, because ethics are kind of like a trend as well, because a lot of ethics change over the time and people's ethics, because you know, we can talk about ethics forever, but this is something that the this uh, the city of Missoula is looking forward to working on in the code of ethics. And many council members didn't know this actually existed in terms of code of ethics, because in their mind, you know, join public office, um, they have to be transparent, open, and have these public forums and public hearings for everything that they decide to do, so they can hear on the local level how people feel and think about certain things that are happening within the city of Missoula. And that's what a lot of these meetings are for, which brings me over to my next topic in which we, you can arm yourself with your own knowledge by logging on to the city of Missoula's websites. You can get permits, you can look for jobs, you can look for all sorts of resources at the city of Missoula's level. I've looked for so much things here. It's a great source of information, but a lot of times people don't know how to use this. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit on how to use this as I transition over to my next topic. Um, ci missoula.mt.us. You can look up City of Missoula. You can put it on the Google um, and you can uh, find it right here. And, and if you see this page, boom, you're at the City of Missoula's page. And what I always do is I like to go to government. Hey, I'm interested in finding out what's going on with the government. You got board member resources. Uh, uh, you got board commission list vacancies. If you're interested in being a uh, public service, they always have vacancies and you can always apply and they um, interview you at the city council, uh, ca county, uh, city council chambers. Of course, you know, here's city council itself. You know, you have committees, uh, members elect, all this stuff. But the very, very top of your uh, city council right here is you got a, a, a agenda, webcast, and amendments. So webcast is the big thing because I show the webcasts on this show uh, from here. So this brings up this page. And if you scroll down, you can see that each of these have a video right around here. Um, I know this is a little small, but I can probably zoom in just a little bit more. You can scroll through here and you can see the videos. If you click on the hyperlink right here, it'll bring you to the, um, the meetings as well. And of course, you can always check up on upcoming meetings on there too. So it is a great resource and I use it all the time for my city council report. Uh, MCAT does uh, air this on our channel as well. So uh, if you have a spectrum, charter spectrum, you can watch it there. You can also uh, go on to MCAT.org to find past meetings and more. MCAT.org is your local resource for everything Missoula. It is a great resource for people who are interested in television, get involved with TV. It's a good stepping stone for people who are getting into the broadcast medium because it's becoming a, a very limited for a lot of uh, professionals. Um, I mean, a lot of times the only time you can get into broadcasting is once you get into college. So it's a good way f for you to see. Uh, it's a free resource for the uh, Missoula community as well. So that's all I have to say about that. I'm going to move on to my next topic, but first and foremost, I'm going to throw you guys a video. And this is a video I wanted to uh, give a shout out to our very own um, producer here who produces his own show called ASAF Cafe. And he produced another thing where he got to embody Liberace. And if you read that uh, article in Missoulian, you get a, a little taste of um, uh, ASAF Adonai, but I'm going to give you the full lot of ASAF uh, from all his uh, mannerisms to all his story about uh, how he feels about Liberace on his story about Liberace right now. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, ASAF Adonai. Welcome to another segment of ASAF Adonai Stories. And to start this story off, the traditional spin. We take our cape off. Your 
Yours truly is wearing a cape in tribute to our guest on today's Asaph Stories, synonymous with the cape. Even Superman would have to stand up and take notice with the sequins, diamonds, furs, and costumes. With his infectious smile, trademark candelabra, the beautiful music he brought us, our guest twice had his own television series, television variety show, The Liberace Show from 1952 to 59, and The Liberace Show 1969. He appeared in the 1950 American adventure film South Sea Center with Shelley Winters, and his first starring motion picture in the romantic film comedy, Sincerely Yours. The world's greatest showman, we're talking about Velazzo Valentino Liberace, known to the world as the one and only Liberace. Velazzo, born 1919, was an American pianist best known for his extravagant costumes and trademark candelabra. Talented and charming, a child prodigy, Liberace became an entertainment sensation, enjoyed a career spanning four decades of concerts, recordings, and television. Born in West Alice, Wisconsin, his fans tuned in weekly as Liberace would tickle the ivories. The seven-year-old Liberace began his studies at the Wisconsin College of Music on a 10-year scholarship. The eminent Florence Betray Kelly soon took charge of the talented youngster's classical training. At 14, his classical training culminated into a debut as soloist with the Chicago Symphony. During the Depression, the young Liberace's virtuosity was needed to help with family finances. In high school, he had his own combo called the Mixers. Highlights include episodes of the American sitcom Here's Lucy with Lucille Ball, Kojak with Telly Savalas. Mr. Liberace. Oh, hello, Sam. How's everything? So far, everything has been very cultural. <laughs> and that worries me, sir. Well, I thought you liked culture. Mm. I played the nocturne, especially for you. Oh. I dedicated it to the birds. Yes, 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 yes. yes. But oh, I know this show, and I have seen your work too, sir. <laughs> He appeared in two features for RKO Radio Pictures, the 1951 Footlight Varieties, combining film shorts with musical numbers and routines by talk show host Jack Parr, and the sequel, Merry Mirth Quakes. South Sea Center is a 1950 American adventure film with McDonald Carey and Shelley Winters, the synopsis, a cafe owner on the South Sea Island plays a dangerous game of blackmail with a fugitive from justice. Other highlights, Liberace wrote three best-selling books, one of which, Liberace, an autobiography, and Liberace Cooks. In 1956, he made his first trip to London to play two command performances for the Queen of England. I'm looking for a guy named Cognac. See how beautifully each phrase blends with the other, like a painting. Chopin? You like him? Always I included Chopin in my concerts. So, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude this story about our guest on today's ASAP Stories, record upon record was set, some of which haven't been broken yet. In 1957, he opened 
in Las Vegas as the highest paid performer in Vegas history. He was parodied in several Bugs Bunny cartoons, one of which the 1955 Warner Brothers cartoon Looney Tunes Bugs Bunny entitled Hide and Hair, with Bugs Bunny playing the piano as Liberace. Liberace was bestowed with many awards, Instrumentalist of the Year, Entertainer of the Year, he won two Emmy Awards for his television series, six gold albums, and two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. So this is just a flyover in the life of Mr. Showmanship himself, Liberace. And your audience can check out more information on him. Although Liberace has graduated, he'll be remembered as one of the best pianists in history, beyond kind, and he brought joy to the world. I am your host, Asaph Adonai, and so, until our next show, Maranatha. <laughs>Hey guys, welcome back. And that was Ace of Adder and I channeling Liberace. And he'll be playing at the Southgate Mall until the 20th of December. So you can see him as much as you possibly can before the end of the, se of the season. But of course, you'll probably most likely see him dressed up in his Liberace attire, um, which uh, Rococo Bridal uh, made it for him for free. Um, um, basically, he's a walking billboard for that for that place, so he'll be talking about that as well. So get your picture with him. Um, he'll post it on his Facebook as well. He's very uh, social media savvy, so um, he's all about uh, making sure that everyone uh, kind of shows him off. And he got a nice article in the Missoulian if you guys get a chance to check it out. All right, let's talk about something else. We're going to talk about some of the art stuff um, that are happening within the city of Missoula. It is First Friday, and kicking things off is... This guy right here at the Burnswick, Burnswick Gallery um, happening in downtown Missoula, Montana. A uh, six-day exhibit and sale of photographs, paintings, postcards by Christy Hager and Leslie V.S. Miller opens today. And it's going to be happening pretty much uh, until uh, Saturday. Well, all, all sorts of different times and everything like that. It's going to be running until about... Uh, December 20th, um, and there are different hours, you can check this stuff, but it's mostly going to be happening, uh, opening at 11, but of course you can check it out happening tonight from 5 to 8 p.m. Most of these events are, most of these art exhibits will be premiering uh, tonight starting at 5 p.m. at many of these art museums and at the Missoula Art Museum, really kicking things off because they're like the main staple of Missoula, free admission, free expression. It is a wonderful place to go uh, uh, Missoula Art Museum's engage, engaging exhibits for free on the first Friday each month from 5 to 8 p.m. Um, and Peace and Unity is going to be featured there. Uh, it's going to, uh, the whole uh, art viewing experience, mu music, uh, no host bar, and create your own masterpiece with the art education team as well. Um, the next one is the Artist Shop runs in the family. The Perks, the Parks family is going to be featured at the Artist Shop. Works in clay, calligraphy, printing, and drawings in the Parks family. Amity, Glenn, Breyer, and Wren uh, Parks will be uh, art will be featured at the Artist Shop. A nice family art. Um, Jenny. Uh, uh, Gian, um, on a memorial uh, fundraiser for Missoula Food Bank, uh, the fifth annual uh, Jean. Sorry, I'm just like, I'm just like, I'm reading this, and then I'm just like, no. Okay, so it's a jewelry sale for the Missoula Food Bank, and uh, it's gonna be at Bathing Beauties. Um, beads. Uh, this story is five years ago when uh, Bathing Beauty Beads held its annual bead challenge, Year of the Mermaid. The winner of the year was uh, Jean Aung. Uh, the award awarded a gift certificate and a First Friday show here in the Bathing Beauties Beads. Jean came to us and asked if her show could donate all the proceeds to the Missoula Food Bank. Jean left her a bead collection to her family and her friends, very generously donated this uh, collection to this particular event. Since last year event, they had multiple amazing humans donate their beads collection as well as specifically to the cause and they can't thank them enough. Um, and this is part of this is also where you get to bring your own beadwork and any money that was raised from selling your beadwork could go to the Montana Food Bank. So up next we have the last first Friday of 2019, and it's going to be uh, at the Radius Gallery. It's the first Friday. Uh, it's also the last first Friday of the year. It's at the f 120 North Higgins in the new year. Come browse the new affordable art, perfect for gift giving. Uh, it's going to be... Uh, 
uh, basically, because the Radius Gallery is going to be moving to uh, their new location on Hicken Street really soon, like really soon, uh, because the the old um, Uptown Diner it closed. They demolished it, and they built a new building, two stories tall, and it's going to be the, the home of the Radius Gallery, which is going to move from their main street entrance to the new Higgins, uh, off the main road of Higgins Street in downtown Missoula. It is a contemporary art gallery in downtown Missoula, dedicated to showcasing skills of contemporary artists, as well as fostering an energetic forum for discussing art and its validity in the world today. Up next, we got... Like Missoula Tea Company, where they're going to have dynamic ceramics by Andrew Rivi Rivera. R Andrew Rivera has a BFA from the University of Minnesota, Duluth. Uh, he aims to capture values from his Mexican heritage in his wares, including everyday rituals, connections, and relationship. He sees the interaction between user and vessel as an opportunity to reflect on interpersonal connections. From 2017-2018, Andrew participated in the Minnesota New Institute of Ceramic Education program in Northern Clay Center, where he has... He always was a sales gallery, um, education, and exhibition associate. All right. And that's going to be at Lake Missoula Tea Company. Will Munoz, uh, he's a photographer here in the city of Missoula. I've seen him. I've, we've worked with him through MCAT. He's done a lot of great uh, photography work within the city of Missoula. This time, he's going to be featured at the Four Ravens Gallery. In this picture you can see right here, that is Alice Cooper. And this is a photography of things and events that have happened and categorized um, and, uh, in the city of Missoula, because Alice Cooper was in Missoula not so long ago. And Missoula photographer William Minos uh, presents a collection of images from the last five years of concerts in the Missoula area. This exhibit features over 25 artists, including scenes from performance Trey Anastogio, uh, Rainbow Kitten Surprise, Dawes, uh, Sylvan Esso, Alice Cooper, Dean Ween, Lake Street Dive, and Dorothy, through December of 2019, you can see this exhibit. It's going to be kicking off. Um, it's going to be at the Four Ravens Gallery. Starting at 6 p.m., William himself will discuss his current photographic exhibit showcasing over 25 performers as well. And last, but definitely not least, is the Indigenous Art Market. Downtown Dance Collective will be in collaboration uh, with uh, the Missoula Urban Indian Health Center and hosting the first uh Indigenous Art Market. So they hope to do an annual event. This market is 100% native-led from event organizing to vendor participation. So you guys can go to the Downtown Nest Collective tonight as well. Enjoy just a whole bunch of art that's happening in and around the city of Missoula. All this happens from 5 to 8 p.m. every first Friday of the month. That's why they call it First Friday. All right, guys. That's pretty much it for all your art stuff as well. I do have a bunch of events happening this weekend as well. But I'm going to kick things off with an art clip, which will be ending on uh, the 14th, so we only have another week before this art is going to be gone. Hey guys, welcome back. Now we have um, some events that are happening this weekend as well. There's Odd Fest. So just so you guys know, Odd Fest is a thing that's happening all throughout the city of Missoula. It's innovative track 
on December 5th and 6th spotlights women innovators from the 406 and beyond. It's designed to be a catalyst for change. Participants can expect a dynamic of Firestone, Fireside conversations, design labs, mixtures, and lightning talks, where the 20 presenters will explore the topic that range from gender equality to higher education to attracting talent to Montana, to women and venture capital, you will want to miss this opportunity to learn, inspire, and connect. So it's a good connecting business entrepreneur thing happening Zootown Dance uh, Zootown Arts Community Center, and it's happening from 10 a.m. to about 3 p.m. There's so many things happening within the downtown Missoula area as well. This as as well, but of course you know uh, the. Missoula Library. The Missoula Public Library is doing Food for Fines. Uh, it's their annual event for the uh, food drive for the Montana Food Bank. There's a lot of food that's going to be donated to the Montana Food Bank. I hope they're ready for this amount of food. Uh, but Missoula F uh, Public Library is doing Food for Fines. If you have a fine, you have an overdue book or anything like that, and you know... You, you, you you just uh, you know it's just like it's like oh money but this way it's it, it, you you basically kill two birds with one stone you donate food it's for a good cause and you get your fines wiped away so Missoula Food Bank that'll be going on until tomorrow uh, but you can always donate food to the Mo Montana Food Bank at any time um, Liberace like I said enjoy live music from 7.30 a.m. to close on Black Friday of course that's already done so I don't know why I just said that because I'm just reading it without actually knowing what I'm talking about but you can enjoy this from about noon to 4 p.m. every single day until December 20th during the weekday uh, it celebrated 10 years of Asa Federnay Exciting, uh, uh, recreating Liberace with live piano performances at Southgate Mall. He'll be playing by the clock in the central near the main entrance of the Southgate Mall as well. And you can check him out. And you can check out all those wonderful tuxes. He has over four tuxes. See if you can get a picture with him in each tux each day. Uh, Christmas Pinecone Wreath Workshop is in the Missoula Public Library. Going right back to the Missoula Public Library. Learn how to decorate a pinecone wreath for the holidays during the Makerspace Workshop in the library's large meeting room. During this workshop, participants learn how to decorate wreaths using materials such as pine cones, acrylic paints, and moss. All supplies will be provided. Space is limited to about 12 participants. That happens from 3 to 5 p.m. You can always RSVP through online registration at MissoulaPublicLibrary.org. Kids Night, Jeanette Rankin Peace Center. Uh, from 5 to 7, drop in your kids or grandkids at the Peace Center to Fair Trade and Local Store. The Olive Branch to do the holiday shopping while you enjoy the First Friday events on the block. The staff and volunteers will assist them in choosing and wrapping ethical holiday gifts for their family and with their given allowance. Uh, Saturday, Odd Fest is continuing on. This is a Montana filmmakers meetup. So if you're a filmmaker, one of the big things that are happening in the state of Montana is that they have a tax credit for major movie pictures. So they'll be probably looking for some people to connect with in the local areas for uh, PA work, hiring work, you know, that kind of stuff. So the Roxy, starting at 9 a.m. to about 10.45 a.m., sponsored by Montana Studio and Montana Film Office. Join for breakfast to learn about the upcoming Montana projects and how to get the most from the new Montana tax incentive. Um, holiday uh, Helga Elementary is doing a PTA Holly Crafts Fair. There's a lot of crafts fair going on here as well. Helga Elementary starting at 9 a.m. and also they're going to be doing a Eagles Lodge uh, at the Eagles number 32 um, Lodge. Um, so this is going to Monzil Fraternity Order of the Eagles is hosting the annual Holiday Crafts Fair. It's happening from 9 to 2 p.m. tomorrow. Um, tables are available at this time. You can contact Mary at 531-0946 to reserve a table. Again, this is for Holiday Crafts Bazaar, and this is a Mary you can call at the Eagle Eagles 32. Excuse me, I just get hiccups all of a sudden. But so, uh, the number again is 531-0946. Parade of Lights. Parade of Trees. Oh, no, wait, Parade of Lights Festival of Trees. All happening in downtown of the city of Missoula. Um, one of the big things that are happening as well um, is the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center is a fun festival day of peace snacks and fair trade shopping. Uh, they're doing a 11 to 3 p.m. peace crane making at the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center. Uh, but also they're doing a Saturday family art workshop at the Missoula Art Museum. This is part of the Wage Peace m Mural. And this is the whole family are invited to make together this artist-led free workshop. Arrive a few minutes early to ensure a spot. This is a drop-in. It's free. 
So this happens from 11 to about 12.30 p.m. Um, children under the age of seven should be accompanied by an adult. All materials are provided. Just bring an open and creative mind. Helping Hands of Elberton Annual Auction, River Edge Resort. Helping Hands is a nonprofit corporation. Their mission is to provide Christmas for children in need in the Elberton area and nearby surrounding communities. Each year they try to reach children who are in need of necessities as well as toys for Christmas. And that's going to be at the River's Edge Resort tomorrow at noon. Uh, speaking of... Uh, uh, trees and all other things and all things Christmassy. Uh, Sockman Bank will be kicking things off with the Festival of Trees. Uh, they'll be held here before you know it, and you can be part of it by designing and decorating a holiday tree. This community celebration takes place December 6th through the 15th at the Sockman Bank Building in downtown Missoula. Once again, I want to promote MCAT's Saturday drop-ins every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m., even through the holidays, because the holidays are going to be landing on a Tuesday, Wednesday, so MCAT will be open for the holidays. I, I asked Neil, and he's like, yeah, I can do it. I'm like, cool. So MCAT's Saturday drop-ins are going to be happening from 1 to 5 p.m. Th Saturdays throughout the entire winter. There's not going to be a Saturday without the Saturday drop-ins until we reach Memorial Day, which will be happening the last weekend in May, or the last... Uh, if it if the last weekend ends on a Monday, if the month ends on like a Monday, then it's the last weekend. But if it ends on a Sunday, that's the weekend before. You'll know about it. But the the way it works is it happens during the school year. That's what MCAT Saturday drop -ins. All right, moving on. Missoula Bruins Teddy Bear Toss Night versus Cobra, 7.30 p.m. at Glacier Ice Rink. It's the biggest event of the season. You don't want to miss the night. Tell everyone you know, help spread the word, let people the biggest crowds of the season so far bring your own teddy bear or stuffed animal or purchase a special Bruins bear at the game. It's a great send-off night for the boys as they head to the uh, NA3HL Showcase in Blaine, Minnesota. Uh, Susical. Uh, one of the, there's so many things happening this weekend, but it's the uh, winter uh, kind of like Christmassy show, but it's not really Christmassy, um, but it's Susical, um, MCT Center for Performing Arts, uh, Missoula's Community Theater will be uh, premiering Susical, which is uh, Dr. Seuss uh, musical um, inspired play based on the works of Dr. Seuss, and it'll be running from December 5th to the 22nd, three weeks of Dr. Seuss in the, in the uh, just off of Broadway, Missoula, um, so you can check all that stuff out as well. Through the um, unique narration of the Cat in the Hat, they meet big-hearted Horton the Elephant, Horton's faithful and loyal head, lead him on an epic adventures in egg sitting and protecting a dust-sized Who world. He also befriends a disillusioned who named Jojo, who, like him, feels alone in the universe. With dazzling music and lyrics by Tony Award team Lynn Ahrens and Stephen Flattery, um, you will and your entire family will be transported and uplifted. Uplifted. Whew. Man, there's a lot of interesting tongue twisters, and Susical is all about them tongue twisters. All right. Thanks, guys. I just want to uh, tell you guys that... Um, uh, it's good to be back. I hope you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving. We are going into the Christmas season, and I will see you guys next Friday. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Sky Ramp, and... Mm -hmm.